To put this gospel reading into context, when Jesus sends his disciples out to teach and heal, they minister among large numbers of people. Their work is motivated by Christ's desire to be among those in need. Christ also models the practice of self-care and Sabbath in the midst of this work and ministry. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And Jesus said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And when they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves, now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. And as Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And Jesus began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to the land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. And when they got out of the boat, people at once began to recognize him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. For many people, summertime is synonymous with vacation time. Summer offers us great opportunities to get away for rest and renewal, and this can take shape in a number of different ways. Some vacations are designed for us to slow down and take a breath. Some vacations are so jam-packed with so many amazing things to do and see that when we finally get home from our vacation, we feel like we need a vacation from our vacation. Anybody had a trip like that? I see some vigorous nods out there, including from my parents. (laughs) Both kinds of those trips have their place. They can feed us and nourish our spirits and our souls. But by the end of the day, one or two vacations over the summer is not enough to satisfy our needs for physical, emotional, and spiritual renewal. And our culture is not particularly good at this, especially with the blending of home and work-life boundaries during the pandemic. Resting from our work has almost become a foreign concept for some people. In the words of one commentator, this gospel passage invites reflection on Sabbath in a world where we have no Sabbath, unquote. And yet, we were created to rest. If we go back, I see that eye roll back there. (laughs) If we go back to the very beginning of the Bible, and we read the creation story, there is a rhythm to God's handiwork. After every act of creation, there is this phrase, there was evening and there was morning on the first day. There was evening and there was morning on the second day. There was evening and there was morning on the third day. But did you catch the order? Evening comes first, and this is intentional. In the Hebrew tradition, a new day begins not with sunrise, but with sunset. A new day begins not with morning, but with evening. Not with our work, but with our rest. So the pattern modeled by God from the very creation of the universe is that we are to work from our rest not rest from our work. 
And then God puts a great big exclamation point on this rhythm of rest and renewal when he intentionally rests on that seventh day. God blesses the seventh day and makes that intentional time for rest holy. In our gospel reading today, Jesus draws our attention again to the importance of these rhythms of rest and renewal. In verse 31, Jesus says to his disciples, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. The disciples had just returned from being sent out by Jesus. They had been teaching and preaching and healing and witnessing and sharing the good news of God all over the countryside and in towns and marketplaces. And at this point in Mark, they have returned to Jesus, reuniting with him, and they are beginning to tell him all about what they saw, all about what they taught, all about what they did. And Jesus looks into their faces, I imagine with great pride, but also with great care and concern, and says to them, come away to a deserted place with me, all by yourselves, and rest a while. For you have been so busy, you haven't even had a chance to eat. So they get in a boat, and they head across the lake for a retreat. Now, I'd like to take a few moments here, close your eyes if it's helpful for you, to imagine what that boat ride must have been like. Maybe the disciples started sharing a bit more about what those past several days of ministry were like, pausing for bouts of laughter and slaps on the back, nods of understanding and smiles exchanged as they recounted their experiences again. Perhaps even a bit of playful teasing among friends, as well as stopping to gaze across the beautiful expanse of the Lake of Galilee. All of this culminating into sacred Sabbath time in the midst of all that hectic coming and going. Now keep your eyes closed if you have them closed. Because I imagine if you took this next step, you could picture times in your lives of sacred Sabbath time, occasions where you were with people that you loved or particularly enjoyed laughing and talking in such a life-giving way. It felt like time almost stopped. And after that time, your spirits were refreshed. And that time together was like balm to your soul. You may open your eyes if they're closed. These sacred Sabbath moments are a gift from God. The rhythm of rest and renewal is a gift from God. And the fact that Jesus underscores how important these things are in Scripture is, too, a gift from God. Because as this gospel passage also points out for us, the needs of the world and the demands upon us and our time never truly go away. It's a good thing those disciples had that time on the boat together because when they arrived to the other shore, we know what happened. The crowds rushed around them, they hurried to follow them, and all of a sudden the retreat that they thought they were going on turned into more kingdom work to be done. Good, important work. But still, even good, important work can drain us of our spirit and our energy. That's why setting aside intentional time for rest and renewal with our Lord and with one another is so crucial. The demands on us are never truly going to go away. And we can only pour ourselves out for others if we also take time to fill ourselves back up. And our gospel demonstrates this important point for us as well. Did you catch how Jesus reacted to the crowds when he saw them? If you want to follow along, you can turn to verse 34. 
When Jesus saw the great crowd, he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And that word compassion in the Greek can be literally translated as moved in the guts. That's that feeling you get in the pit of your stomach when you see someone or something that you want nothing more than to help and comfort and care for with every fiber of your being. Jesus has compassion for addressing the needs of others, one, because he's Jesus, but two, because I firmly believe Jesus is paying attention to his own needs too of praying and fasting and worshiping, of eating and drinking and sleeping, of rest and renewal. Jesus cares for others and the needs of others because he is caring for his own physical and emotional and spiritual needs as well. And that means then, when we follow Jesus' lead on this, we too will be able to increase our well of compassion for others and increase our capacity to make the world a better place. Like Jesus, we too will be able to work from our rest rather than rest from our work. Now, there's lots of books that have been written about this, but there's one in particular that it's not an understatement today changed my, uh, to say changed my life. Um, this is called Sabbath by Wayne Muller. And every short chapter offers an example of a Sabbath practice that you can day, do for a few minutes at a time or for a longer intentional amount of time. But in this book, the author talks about how all of us would be better at creatively solving the tough issues of the world if we took more intentional time for rest and renewal. I want to read you just a short paragraph of what he says. Our lack of rest and reflection is not just a personal affliction. It colors the way that we respond to suffering. I have sat on dozens of boards and commissions, he says, with many fine, compassionate, and generous people who are so tired, overwhelmed, and overworked that they neither have the time nor the capacity to listen to the deeper voices that speak to the essence of the problems before them. Presented, he says, with intricate and delicate issues of poverty, public health, community well-being, and crime, our impulse born of weariness is to rush headlong toward doing anything that would make the problem go away. But without the essential nutrients of rest, wisdom, and delight embedded in the problem-solving process itself, the solution that we patch together is likely to be an obstacle to genuine relief." Unquote. So, how do we increase our capacity to listen to the deeper voices that speak to the problems before us and help us discern where God is calling us next? Our gospel would say, we set aside intentional time for rest and renewal with the good shepherd. Jesus is the one who provides for us both in the chaos and in the calm the one who fills us back up, offering support and encouragement and care and peace and a renewed sense of purpose and hope. Jesus is the one who looks with compassion into our exhausted faces and says, come away with me and rest for a while. You have been doing so much. I will take care of you. I will feed you, I will nourish you, I will be your shepherd, and you shall not want. I will make you lie down in green pastures and lead you beside still waters, and I will restore your soul. At its very heart, this is what Sabbath is about, renewing and restoring our souls. As Bishop Dan Bowden has said, rest is not about relaxing on the back deck or hammocking in the backyard. Rest is about renewal, 
When we rest, we take intentional time away from work and life to connect and commune with God so that God may renew our souls. So, in that spirit today, I'd like to invite us to reflect a little bit more on how God is calling us to renew our souls. If I could have the ushers stand up and begin passing this handout to everyone. You're invited to ponder these questions for the next few minutes. There are pencils in the pews, or Barbara also has some pens if you'd prefer to use pen. Perhaps you've had that jam-packed vacation already. What are the ways that you will be filled up before the fall? What do you want to make sure you get to experience in terms of rest and renewal before the summer is over? We're about halfway already. This first question is intriguing to me. What word or phrase do you want to live out with the rest of your summer weeks? So take a few moments to look over this. If you're online at home, there's a slide that will be put up if it's not up already so you can answer these questions too. And if you want the full handout and Sabbath resources that I'll be passing out, you can get those at goodsoillutheran.org on the bulletins tab. Let us ponder and reflect a bit on how God is calling us to rest and renewal.
I hope this gave you some time to reflect and that you'll take it home with you and reflect some more. The sheet I passed out is another list of ideas and resources. The back of that question sheet also has some ideas for some fun, exploring, resting, and Sabbath time over the summer. The last thing I wanted to say with us together this morning is that your act of being here in worship today, whether you are here in person or worshiping at home, is one of the single most powerful acts of Sabbath that you can do. In our weekly rhythm of worship together, we renew our relationship with Christ. We give praise and thanks to God. We revel in God's word and ponder the Spirit's activity in our lives. We pray for the whole world and offer our gifts to help those in need. We deepen our relationships with one another. In the context of this faith community, we are fed and nourished at the Lord's Supper. And we find rest and renewal for our souls so that we can be sent out again and again to heal the world back onto its feet. In Jesus' name, amen.